Good morning uh, and welcome. Uh, my name is Andrew Latrobe. I run the RCI program, which uh, someone pointed out to me, given that the idea behind these discussions is to is to give an idea to people not necessarily active in the faith. I should explain RCIA, which is the right of the right of Christian initiation for adults, um, which essentially is uh, welcoming those that wish to become Catholics as adults. I'm joined this morning by Jackie and Andrew Pembroke, who are members of the St. Thomas's Parish, very active and long-standing members. Uh, Jackie's involved in, in, in pilgrims. Uh, and Andrew does one of the most difficult jobs in the parish, trying to convince uh, those of us to, to read and, and serve and act as, as stewards in the parish. So thank you very much, both of you, for, for joining this morning. And uh, we, we, we're just going to follow a bit of a chat and, and give people a sense of, of your Catholic lives, if we may. So welcome. And, and I know that when we spoke about this, Jackie and Andrew, you, you mentioned really a, a, a lovely story about the first occasion that uh, you actually uh, received the, the sacrament of Eucharist together. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that occasion, how it came about and, and the impact that it had on, on, on each of you? Yes, right. right. Um, I, Jackie is a cradle Catholic. I was brought up in the Church of England although I had had periods through my life when I had seriously thought of becoming a Catholic, going right back to childhood. And when we were married, I was still in the Church of England. I was still very much drawn to the Roman Catholic Church. And we were married in St. James Spanish Place, and it was a nuptial mass. And exceptionally, and I'm not entirely, we're not entirely sure whether licitly or not, the priest who married us gave us both Holy Communion, which was certainly a very, very unusual thing to happen. It was a great privilege, and I found it extremely good. And I think we both felt being united in this sacrament was a wonderful thing for us. Mm. We've remembered very strongly ever since. Um, I think. We got married in 1977. Yes. So it was a period. It was still a post-Vatican II period of some unsettled things. Yes. And ecumenicism was was quite a big thing, mm. and it looked as though there was going to be quite a lot of opening up. And I think maybe that is why this priest offered just the two of us, not the rest of the congregation communion yes, together yes. and he mm. knew Andrew from talking together beforehand mm. and knew his situation mm. but anyhow it was an absolutely wonderful thing to have yes, that yes. it really yes. brought the whole marriage together mm. I think. Oh, and subsequently he received me into the Catholic Church in fact but okay. some years later about three years five years later perhaps not quite five four or five years later okay uh, my father was actually i must, must explain my father was an anglican he was living with us then not not at all well and that was one reason why i delayed but in fact it was his generosity in suggesting that i should go ahead and become a catholic that allowed me to go and do so and i must say the anglican parish which i belonged to was also very nice about it there, was no, well, there were no difficulties or obstacles of that kind. Yes, yes. No, I, but I can see how, you know, that, that uh, receipt, receiving Holy Communion together was, was the genesis of something. And so, you know, having been blessed with, with being a, in a Catholic marriage on my side as well, it is, it is a wonderful thing there, uh, uh, one's faith with, with one's spouse. It, it, mm. It certainly, I think it it it's a great solace in, in family life. But but perhaps I can I can ask that because you know looking back uh, over the years, um, at, at, at how do you how do you feel that, that your reception into the church? What 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 was the you know how did that change family life, um, or how did it impact? Difficult perhaps because it was obviously early on in in your uh, in your marriage, but. But talk a little bit about that, of how you feel uh, the, 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 uh, the fact that you've been both Catholic has, has been, uh, you know, significant in terms of family life. Well, I think it's enormously helpful, both from the point of view of marriage and from the point of view of, of one's faith. 
because there is a great deal of support you can have from a spouse who is also a Catholic. I think it's very difficult if your spouse isn't a Catholic, particularly if she were to be antipathetic to the Catholic Church, as some people very, for all sorts of good, no doubt good reasons are. I think that uh, just simply the, the time constraints when you're bringing up children of someone going off every Sunday morning for an hour is could be quite irksome, I can well imagine. It's, uh, it's, it's not so. It's also quite lonely. Yes. And I think one has to remember that. Mm. And sometimes I see <coughs> people in the parish who I know are married coming on their own. Mm. And I, I'm always impressed because mm. I know they have a family life that they've had to leave in order to keep coming. Mm. And so when someone joins you in your faith and you can go together, it, you know, it is a tremendous support. And, and, and also on the practical side of making sure the children <laughs> come yes. or get uh, being looked after at the same time. Yes. Absolutely. And, and, and I think, uh, as you said, Jackie, you, you, you look at people where they, they don't have that. And it is a huge commitment. And you can see how uh, the, the other spouse, it's a real commitment for them to make that happen. Let them go. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. Yes. Exactly. But it's I not a see... one way thing. No. Absolutely. Marriage is not a one way no. thing. There's so many. Uh... No, exactly. <laughs> But it's it's you know certainly in in, in your case uh, and and I suppose in in Ingrid in my case it does then leave some energy over to give back to parish life and and certainly we see that in 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 your contribution and commitments to the parish has been wonderful that you've been able to do together. Well, it has it has certainly been a help to be able to I mean, assist one another. Yes, I think in the early days we were in a totally different parish. Yes totally different in congregation and time because things have moved on so much. I mean, we were working in London in a, our parish was a very East End parish of a mixed community um, with very different needs. Mm. And at that time, there weren't all the pastoral educational supports that are available now. Mm. Well, certainly not. They, they weren't there at that point. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I mean, also, I mean, I was working long, long hours. hours and I was working. It, it was just about all I could do to get to Sunday Mass. And if I could manage a holy day of obligation, that involved a bit of extra push, so to speak. Yes, <laughs> yes. No, that's, that, that, that is it in different phases and, and so forth. And and, you know, we currently huge beneficiaries of the fact that you have more time. But as you said, there's frequently times in our lives as Christians, as Catholics, as, as all walks of life, where it is just keeping the family show on the road is, is, is the thing. Mm. Yes. Um, but Jackie, you mentioned, you know, I think you mentioned some positive pastoral changes. And, and, and I think sometimes we do, we do perhaps get... Uh, I suppose it's inevitable when we focus on some of the negatives and, and of course there, there have been lots of negatives that the church has had to deal with recently. And of course that has perhaps been, you know, the prompt for a lot of loss of, of participation in the practice, but, but there are lots of very positive things. And I just wondered if you look at, you know, the difference between the church as you see it today from, you know, from, from those early days of, of, of your early marriage, you know, what are the, what are the, some of the positive and I suppose the negative, but how, you know, how has, has, has life changed? Do you see that the crisis we're in is really any different to any age that the church is living through? I think every age has its crises. Mm. I mean, in the, in the seventies, when we married, there were lots of things that were happening and losses, losses from the priesthood. Um, in, people who left to get married um, and trouble about the pill in those days. That was the big thing. But yeah. now we've moved on and there are other terrible things. But so the church is smaller, I think, but it's much more, it's being more defined. Mm -hmm. And there's more focus on what are the real concerns mm -hmm. and truth of what we're practicing. And I think yeah. that's what, 
is the main thing for nearly every, uh, for all practicing Catholics. There is the ability to know more about what you're doing, why you're there. Mm -hmm. and, and that is what I think, both in the RCIA and in those who are already within the church, that they have that benefit now, whether it's on Zoom, like we're doing it now, mm. or face to face. Um, I think that's uh, one big step and improvement. I think that one thing which has changed, which was important, which has been helpful from my point of view, is that there are far more people who are active in the parish who are converts rather than cradle Catholics. <laughs> you don't, you don't, whereas when you started, I mean, as a convert, uh, we're definitely slightly out on a limb. And, of course, and there are some parishes, there were certainly in those days, which all belonged to one particular demographic. And if you didn't belong to that, you would definitely have felt rather, not excluded, but in a rate of the odd man out, which is not, not necessarily a comfortable feeling. Uh, yes, whereas yes. now, I mean, it, we're much more mixed and people come from wherever. And a lot of our most active members, indeed, both our priests, I think, converts, they were not. <laughs> so, yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> No, that's 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 wonderful, and and uh, Jackie, your point about perhaps people having more opportunity to truly understand the faith that that's mm. a wonderful and very encouraging yes. point. Um, I, 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 um, can we end perhaps with with just you giving a sense of what you know, just a very short uh, sense of from each of you. What encouragement would you give to young married couples in terms of the faith? What you know what what do you see as, as what the faith really offers marriage and, and family life? I think keep going to Mass. Yeah. I think throughout the bad times, the difficult times, the arid times, yeah. keep going because there is a grace there that will come and form you in your family. I think that's absolutely true. I think the Sunday obligation is an immense support, funnily enough, paradoxically, mm -hmm. because yes. if you if you had to fit it in, if you did it when you felt it was convenient to do so, <laughs> yeah, it would have never, hardly ever actually happen in reality. So I think that's very important. I think the other thing is not to worry if the children misbehave in church, because that's what children are like. And other people, speaking for myself now, as long as it's someone else's child who's misbehaving, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. <laughs> <laughs> and Absolutely. <the> other... <laughs> Likewise. Uh, that's, that's, it. that's a very fine point. Well, uh, look, thank you so much uh, to you both. Uh, for sharing that and uh, I'm sure this will be a source of great encouragement. God bless. Thank you very much.